Welcome all of you to class 10. Now be serious for your studies. Make NCERT book your godfather. In this chapter, we shall see the resources and their development. Human beings have developed the resources according to their needs. Human beings have used the things present in nature to lead an easy life. Here, in the picture you can see, human beings have used the resources to develop. What is a resource? Well, in class 8 you might have studied what a resource is. Anything used by us is a resource. My toys, my puppy, my books and what about your friends? So, comment in the comment section whether your friends are resources or not since you all are tenthers so you have to elaborate the definition you studied earlier into conditions the new definition will be everything available in our environment which can be used to satisfy our needs provided it is technologically accessible economically feasible and culturally acceptable can be termed as resource from the definition you need to understand three terms given, technologically accessible, economically feasible and culturally acceptable. Technologically accessible means human beings must have the technology to convert the substance given into a resource. Another term is economically feasible. It means the resources should not be that much costly that we cannot afford it and culturally acceptable you all understand it should not look weird while we are using it the relationship between nature technology and institutions human beings interact with nature through technology and create institutions to accelerate their economic development. Resources can be classified on various bases. Here we have taken four bases for classifying resources. The first one is origin, second is exhaustibility, then ownership and then status of development. According to origin, the resources can be of two types, biotic and abiotic. According to the exhaustibility, resources can be renewable and non-renewable. According to the ownership, resources can be individual, community, national and international. On the basis of status of development, resources can be classified into potential, developed, stock and reserve. In the NCRT book, another classification of resources is given. According to the book, the resources can be classified into natural and human. Natural resources again can be classified into renewable and non-renewable. Human resources can be classified into structures and institutions and quantity and quality. Again, renewable resources can be continuous or flow and biological. Non-renewable can be classified into recyclable non-recyclable. Again, biological resource can be classified into natural vegetation and wildlife. Now pause the video and try to answer the following questions. If you are not able to answer the questions, please rewind and revise what you have learned until the indiscriminate use of resources has led to following major problems. They are depletion of resources, accumulation of resources in few hands, global ecological crisis. In June 1992, more than 100 heads of states met in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil for the first International Earth Summit. The summit was convened for addressing urgent problems of environmental protection and socio-economic development at the global level. In June 1992, the world met in Rio to discuss the fate of planet Earth. 
In this largest summit and very first Earth summit ever held, representatives from 166 countries, 130 heads of state, and 15,000 non-governmental organizations came together with the hopes of deciding specific agreements that would balance environmental preservation with economic needs. Everyone wonders what happened at Rio. Why did we hear so little about it? With 9,000 journalists, the largest gathering of international press the world has ever seen in one place, it is a wonder why more information was not disseminated. One reason was obvious. The majority of press stayed inside the fortress-like walls of UNSAID, the UN Conference on Environment and Development, and roamed around looking for tidbits of news. When a story seemed to be brewing, the hungry crowd of journalists grew frantic like a pack of piranhas in a feeding frenzy, looking for sound bites and media clips. Yet the real news was taking place 30 miles away in an alternative conference called the Global Forum. Here were gathered the NGOs, or non-governmental organizations, who spoke with a strong voice about the real problems facing the planet. It was in this direction we chose to focus our cameras and glean the wisdom and truths of those who were for the most Resource planning is done in India in three steps. First, resources are identified and invented. Then, technology, skill and institutions are set up for the development of the resource. And then, resources are matched with the development of nation. Since conservation of resources has been a global concern, so Mahatma Gandhi told there is enough for everyone's need but not for anybody's greed. According to Mahatma Gandhi, the causes of depletion of resources are greedy and selfish individuals, exploitative nature of modern technology, mass production rather than production by masses. Since this is a long chapter, we'll revise it in parts. So I would request you all again to pause the video and try to answer the following questions. If you are not able to answer the following questions, then revise and again try to answer the questions. Land resources in India 43% of the land in India are plains, 27% plateaus and 30% of the land in India are mountains. In India, we put the land into various uses. They can be forests, wasteland, uncultivated land, fallow land and net zone area. The land use pattern in India is shown here in the pie chart. You are requested to pause the video and follow what type of land and what percentage of land is shown here and that is present in the in India. The use of land is determined by both physical factors such as topography, climate, soil type as well as human factors such as population density, technological capability and culture and tradition etc. One of the most important topic of the chapter is land degradation. The causes of land degradation are deforestation, overgrazing, over irrigation, industries, mining and quarrying, industrial influence. Deforestation means cutting of forest for various purposes like slash and burn, timber etc. In states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, overgrazing is the main cause of the land degradation. Over irrigation in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, over irrigation is responsible for land degradation due to water logging leading to increase in salinity and alkalinity in the soil. Industries The mineral processing like grinding of limestone for cement industry and calcite and soapstone for ceramic industry generate huge quantity of dust in the atmosphere. It retards the process of infiltration of water into the soil after it settles down on the land. Mining and Quarrying Mining sites are abandoned after excavation work is complete, leaving deep scars and traces of overburdening. Industrial Influence Industrial influence as waste 
have become a major source of land and water pollution in many parts of the country. Another important question that can be asked from the chapter is how is land degradation conserved? So the conservation measures of land degradation are afforestation and proper management of grazing, planting of shelter belts of plants, control on overgrazing, stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes are some of the methods to check land degradation in arid areas. Another is proper management of wastelands, control of mining activities, proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluents and waste after treatment can reduce land and water degradation in industrial and suburban areas. Again, I would request you to pause the video and solve the following questions. If you are not able to solve the following questions, then revise and try to solve it again. Soil as a resource Soil is the powdered form of rocks or weathered rock materials. It takes millions of years to form soil up to a few centimeters in depth. Relief, parent rock or bedrock, climate, vegetation and other forms of life and time are important factors in the formation of soil. Other factors which contribute to the formation of soil are various forces of nature such as change in temperature, actions of running water, wind and glaciers, activities of decomposers, etc. Chemical and organic changes which take place in the soil are equally important. Soil also consists of organic that is humus and inorganic materials. The various layers of soil found inside the earth is shown in the image. The layers are organic, topsoil, subsoil, parent material, bedrock. It is also divided into horizon. O horizon, A horizon, B horizon, C horizon, R horizon. Various types of soil found in India. First is alluvial soil. Alluvial soil is found in the region of northern India. It is a mixture of clay and sand that is loam. It is rich in phosphoric acid and organic matter. It is poor in nitrogen and potash. The suitable crops that grow in alluvial soil are rice, wheat, bajra, maize, jute, etc. Black soil is also known as regar soil. It is found in the region of southwest India and Deccan lava tract. The characteristics of black soil is it becomes sticky when it is wet and when it is dry it develops cracks. The black soil is rich in iron, lime, magnesium and aluminium and black soil is poor in phosphorus, nitrogen and humus. The black soil is suitable for the growth of cotton, sugarcane and some other cereals. Red and yellow soils The red and yellow soils are found in the region of Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Deccan Plateau and Western Ghats. The characteristics of red and yellow soils are they are found in the weathered metamorphic rock, they are acidic in nature, they are rich in potash and poor in lime, nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium and organic matter. The red and yellow soils are suitable for the growth of rice, wheat, potato, ragi, pulses, etc. Laterite soil is found in the region of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kerala and Assam. The characteristics of laterite soil is that it is acidic in nature, it is rich in iron and poor in humus, phosphate, nitrogen and calcium. The laterite soil is suitable for the growth of rice, wheat, bajra, maize, jute, etc. Arid soils or dry soil it is found in the west of Arabli mountain. They are sandy and low clay contained soil. They are rich in salt but poor in nitrogen, humus and moisture. The soil after irrigation can be made suitable for the growth of rice, wheat, bajra, maize, 
jute, etc. The last type of soil mentioned in the book is the forest soils. They are found in the region of Himalayas, western and eastern Ghats. They are little acidic in nature. They are rich in organic matter that is humus and poor in phosphorus, lime and potash. The forest soil is suitable for the growth of barley, coffee, tropical and temperate fruits. Now you have been given a table where you have to put the content regarding the characteristics, region, suitable crop and components of the soil you studied earlier. So pause the video and fill the following table. The denudation of the soil cover and subsequent washing down is described as soil erosion. The processes of soil formation and erosion go on simultaneously and generally there is a balance between the two. Sometimes this balance is disturbed due to human activities like deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining. They can be said as the causes of soil erosion while other natural forces like wind, glacier and water lead to soil erosion. Generally, there are two types of soil erosion. First is gully erosion. The running water cuts through the clay soil and makes deep channels as gullies. That is known as gully erosion. And another one is sheet erosion. When water flows as a sheet over large areas down a slope, in these cases, the top soil is washed away. This is known as sheet erosion. Now, again a very important topic that is conservation of soil. This you have already studied in class 8 and again you have to study here. Here in the book it is given about four types of conservation of soil measures. First is contour farming. Plowing along the contour lines can decelerate the flow of water down the slopes. This is called contour plowing as you can see in the image. The second one is terrace farming. Steps can be cut out on the slopes making terraces terrace cultivation restricts erosion as you can see in the image. Strip cropping Large fields can be divided into strips. Strips of grass are left to grow between the crops. This breaks up the force of the wind. This method is known as strip cropping. It is different from contour plowing. In the contour plowing, contours are small in size but in strip cropping, strips are relatively larger in size. Shelter belt. Planting lines of trees to create shelter also works in a similar way. Rows of such trees are called shelter belts. As you can see in the image, shelter belts are grown just on the boundary of the crops. Now again you are requested to pause the video and solve the following questions. If you are not able to solve the question, then revise and again try to solve it. Thank you.